Welcome to Tony Unleashed, the podcast where we unleash the truth about all things pets. Our research and anecdotal evidence matched with pet expert interviews will help you help your pet thrive. We are here to answer questions, divulge information, and spread awareness about what's really going on in the world of pets. I am your co-host, Emily Taylor, pet nutrition enthusiast. And I'm Tony Shalaski, owner of Healthy Pet Products with three locations in the Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania area, and recently expanded to Port Charlotte, Florida. Welcome to the show. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Tony Unleashed the Podcast. Today, we're talking about a rescue here in our Pittsburgh area that we have become very, very, very fond of. The rescue group is called Orphans of the Storm, and they are located in Catanning, PA, which is about 45 minutes north of Pittsburgh, I would say. Yes. And we have Beth Ann with us today. Beth Ann is your official title, Executive Director? Uh Uh-huh. Yep. So Beth Ann is Executive Director, and today we have her here to talk about her journey with Orphans of the Storm the trials and tribulations of running an animal shelter, as well as the adventures of a new building looming in the very near future and how we can help the general public. Beth Ann, we really appreciate you taking the time out of your very busy day and talking to us about Orphans of the Storm and your mission and message. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm like really excited. Yeah, I feel like I mean, if you're a listener and if you've been listening from the beginning, I feel like you can really sense our love and passion and respect for the rescue world. Yeah. Um, and I feel like our voices really light up when we talk about this. And it's so it's really exciting that we have a really strong and incredible representative to talk even further about the rescue world and dogs and cats um, and and everything. We're going to talk about when, you know, who established Orphans of the Storm, how long it's been around for, the number of dog residents. So. Let's get to it. What's the background story behind Orphans of the Storm? What year was it established? Who established it? How did you become executive director? Just give it to us straight. (laughs) So um, my mother, whose name was Gladine Wiles, started Orphans of the Storm in 1969. Out of a need, she saw that there was nowhere for stray animals to be taken and housed while they were looking to see if they could find an owner. Back then, there was no animal shelter in our area or surrounding area. So, unfortunately, if an animal was picked up and the police picked it up and they kept it a little while, we know that the end result was being put to sleep, Mm -hmm. euthanized, Mm -hmm. because they had nowhere to keep it. Mm -hmm. My parents had a small stable. They had some a couple horses and did some horse showing or horse showing in their life. So she came up with an idea, and that is she got some help with cementing one of the rooms in in the stables, and that, that she would take it from there. And she did. I I was a young child, um, and can remember our very first day open of cars packed in our driveway with people <gasps> wanting to. Drive. Drop animals off. Really? Drop animals so, off? Yes. Wow. And so she had a friend in the animal business show world that had a boarding kennel and a, ca- a kennel. She showed some dogs and she retired. And she then offered it and said, would you like to use my kennel? So we went there. And then from there with some matching funds that are they don't do no more through the state. We built, or we didn't build, but Orphans of the Storm was built in its present location, which is in 1971. So the math is easy for me because I was born in 1968. So Orphans of the Storm is 54 years old as a shelter. And you have been in the building that you currently are in now for 50 years oh yeah. my god so that building that you're in now that you've been in for 52 years that was one of the stables is that right no, or no, no. no that was built okay that we was built that building okay yes yes wow. that building was built for us wow 
And you can see, I mean, that is a reason in itself that we need a new building without all the other flooding and those sort of things. It's an old building. It's outdated. It's not big enough. Mm -mm. Yep. You know, everything needs updated. And if that building, if they came in now and somebody would want to use that building, it wouldn't even. They right. didn't have a shelter in it. Right. But we're grandfathered in. We've been there and, and they know we're trying to get a new building and working hard at it. So we just trudge along in that building. But there's just so much that it needs. So how many how many animals are in the building right now? How many? An- <sighs> yeah. Usually there's always somewhere more give than take a hundred. A hundred. And that's between dogs and cats. That's between dogs and cats. Yeah, usually we have anywhere from 100 to 120. In that building. Yes, and that's dogs and cats. And then what about in foster homes? That varies. The last two months we've had around 100 (gasps) in foster homes. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Oh, my gosh. And that that is, and only because I've been following you guys on social media, that's, a hundred is made up of, I, th- I feel like a lot of litters of puppies, right? Yes. So yes. one we've foster home will yes, have like five or six. Lately. Yes. 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 Yeah. And, and that's a lot. I mean, that's a lot of puppies. That's a it lot is of dogs. a lot. And it, it was, yes, we always have puppies. We usually don't have as many as we've had, but it just so happened that there was a lot of litters at the same time were of age to be adopted. So, you know, that added to there being so many at once. So one of the main reasons, Bethann, that we wanted to have you on was to get bring more awareness to what you're doing, how many animals you're trying, you're you're saving, um, and the dire need for a new building and the funds to build that building. You've got the land. We do, yeah. And we're yes, what the lamb was the lamb yeah. was donated to us by the county. Absolutely. And the estimated amount needed for a new building is? Around th- uh, approximately 3.6 million. Okay. Give or take, depending on, you know, construction, yeah. material, and that sort of and thing. With- and we've, ra- we've raised 2.2 million. Fabulous. Wow. Fabulous. So wow. at least 1.4 to go, because it would be nice to have a little bit to grow on, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. And a shelter is more than just sheltering animals in need. It's a it's a resource for the community. It is a resource. Yes. And this building will um, let us have implement lots of programs that we'd like to have Mm -hmm. that we can't have because we are space wise. There is no space. You know, it's hard for volunteers to be there. It's hard for the public to come in there and do Mm -hmm. any kind of programs we'd like to have there just is no move around room at all you're there you know and there isn't wiggle room in the building yeah so for for our listeners um tony and i have been there a couple of times now i frequent dropping off donations and we both try to volunteer on holidays that are weather permitting Mm -hmm. so you know to paint a picture for our listeners when you when you walk in, it's a very narrow hallway and you have your office on the left, which is a small office that fits you, Greta, the dog, an <laughs> office dog and right. another woman who is in there. Right. Uh-huh. Um, and then you have your adoption room on the left and then next to you. And then you have a tight quarters for a cat room. And then pretty much you hit a sink and a couple kennels. Tub? A sink, a tub, a couple of uh, crates, and then you just immediately hit, you know, the, uh, run, the uh, runs uh, uh, with dogs in it. And and there are crates yeah. filled with dogs that are that can fit the space and carefully located and appropriately spaced and all that kind of stuff. But when it's tight, it's tight. And when we first walked in. You know, when I first went to Best Friends Animal Sanctuary in Utah, I was moved, like moved by the mission, moved by the the commitment to the animals. And I felt the same way when I walked into your shelter, Bethann. I was moved 
very deeply by what you all are doing and what you're doing in such a small space too and how many dogs and cats and lives you're truly saving and like you know the the people in your corner the foster homes that are there supporting you guys the volunteers that are there the people that are working there for you i mean it's it's a huge undertaking it is yes and you're you're in a in a place in Pittsburgh that people it's not yeah. people don't go to Catanning very often. I mean, people in the city, you know, in terms of rescuing animals, they hear H A R, they hear Animal Friends, and like some small rescues. But I mean, people don't travel all the way to Catanning from the city just to get a dog that often. Or cat. Oh, they do. They do. <laughs> Good. So when we started, there were not. We all know this. There were not that many shelters around. So when we first started, we took from five counties. Adrian Zappa, who was part of the Department of Agriculture, when we started, she talked to my mother and said, there's no resources for Clarion County and Jefferson County and some of the counties up north. And we, you're going to help us solve this. So we had Three and four dog wardens almost daily sitting in our driveway with animals. Hmm. So we've always been a shelter that housed approximately the same amount of animals. It is consistent, consistent, I'm sorry, with the amount of animals we have. Mm -hmm. So our intake and outtake for years is pretty consistent. We do it in a little bit different way now. I hope one of the major things that my mother was very committed to was spaying and neutering. So from the moment Orphans of the Storm opened, we were spaying and neutering animals. And she's always had some program of some type going on to help people outside of the shelter animals get their animals spayed and neutered. That was always an extremely important to her. Mm -hmm. So through the years, we have seen a decrease in the amount of puppies coming from our area. So we do things a little bit different now, but we've always consistently had and tried to help just about the same amount of animals. Wow. How many, how many animals do you adopt out a year roughly? We're down this year in some areas, but we can, we do usually somewhere around 700, sometimes more. Yeah. This year's a little less but we are around that amount. Wow. So this year, meaning 2022? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So that's two a day about. And, and, you know, that, that also has to do with in recent years, the amount of foster based rescues that have opened up between here and the Pittsburgh area Mm -hmm. that have opened up and there's a lot more rescues. So we don't see the amount of dogs from the South of us as we used to, because there are rescues that can help in that, you know, in that area. And do you, you guys have some dogs right now that I'm aware of, and I can think of a couple that are, are going to be a lot harder to adopt due to um, medical issues, due to their history. So you have, it seems like you have a lot of long-term residents as well. That We have a lot of long-term residents, yes. And we just have our, Sarah Burke has a training. I just saw that you guys just posted that recently. Yes, yes. And she's uh, the daughter of one of our cat fosters and volunteers. And um, she's been talking for quite a while about helping with the animals. So she has Nova. She's our first animal she's helping us with. And um, we hope that she will continue to help. And some of these dogs that don't, they're not dogs maybe with major issues that need work with, but somebody that can work with them one-on-one and help them overcome some obstacles they have to adoption and make them more adoptable. And My follow-up question to that, and this isn't on our pre-outline, so if you don't feel comfortable answering, we can can cut it out. Um, But I just want to change kind of the narrative of why dogs and 
you know, for our listeners who maybe have only bought dogs or are breed specific dogs and change the narrative on why dogs end up on shelters and that it's not just because they are bad dogs. So can you speak to, you know, the reason why dogs are surrendered to your shelter or how you get so many dogs and puppies and where they come from? Sure. So those are a couple different answers and questions, actually. The first question about why there are surrenders We see a lot of surrenders because people do not do their research. (laughs) And I try to tell everybody, if you're getting a shepherd husky, it's shepherd husky, beagle, hound, Jack Russell, whatever those breeds are, that dog is going to have some personality of some of them breeds. Mm -hmm. It may have the hound breed that steps out. And that is what the dog has. You better do some research and know that that dog you're getting is going to suit your lifestyle Mm -hmm. and your home. And so many people don't do that. They see the movie or they see the man down the street Mm -hmm. with a fluffy, whatever, sheep dog. And they think, wow, is that cute? Look at that fluffy dog. Or they grew up with a German shepherd and it was like, you know. Right. They only know the positives about the German Shepherd when they were a kid. That's right. (laughs) So that's, that, that's a top reason. And we have that discussion with people all the time that, um, and I just had the discussion about, I did an adoption while we were dropping off surgery animals today at Frankie's friends and the lady met me there to adopt. She adopted her foster dog. And we had this discussion about the doodle breeds and the so-called and you know, the ins and outs Mm -hmm. and, you know, people think they're getting a non-shedding dog. Mm -hmm. That isn't so, Mm -hmm. you know, and that's another thing we have people, well, we got this dog and thought it wasn't going to shed. Well, look at the short hair. Well, that doesn't mean it's not going to shed. You know, everything sheds. Yes. Different degrees and you take care of it. Maybe you get your dog groomed. So you're getting rid of that. You know, you're not seeing that constant shedding. But these are all things people need to think about before they go out and just buy it. Spur the moment. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And and get that animal. You know, people do have issues that crop up in their life that they can't find any other way to keep their animal. It happens. Mm-hmm. Uh, we wish it didn't. But no matter some of them, what you offered to them, they still can help the situation they're in. Other ones we see people just get them and they're sick of them and they're tired of taking care of them and, or it needs a medical need taken care of and they don't want to pay for it. So you see, you know, it, it runs from the gamut, you know, mm-hmm. from legitimate to not so legitimate, of course, spaying and neutering, spaying and neutering, spaying and neutering. And there are so many programs in almost every area, there is somebody low cost, low cost spay and neuter. Somebody that offers low cost yep. spaying and neutering. And that's another thing, you know, I say to people put a little bit of money away each month in an envelope, yep. put it away. Don't think about it. That is your animal fund. Before too long, you have the money saved up to, to have the animal spayed and neutered. Or if something crops up, mm-hmm. you have some money to fall back on. But spay, spay, spay. And that's why we see so many puppies. Um, Our puppies, most all of them, the majority of our puppies, 90% of our puppies do not come from our area. They come from areas where their people aren't spaying and neutering. And all of the rescues and all of the rescues, you know, are trying to help, you know, and, and most rescues will. We say to people, we want to get your mother dog spayed. Please let us get it spayed. We'll pay for it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, so. And it's really, really solves so much in the world, spaying and neutering, you know, and look up, do some research, look up low cost spaying and neutering. Almost everybody has a computer or knows somebody that does that they can research and go online and try to find one of these clinics that'll help you. And, and to that point too, like, First of all, you're not just because a dog's in a shelter or in a rescue, one does not mean it's a bad dog per se. Correct. Two, correct. you're not 
there are more dogs out there in shelters that are not just pit bulls that people are scared of. There are, That's you true. have minpins, you have corgi mixes, you have Shiba Inu mixes, you have dachshund mixes, you have doodle mixes, you have Jack Russell Terrier mixes. I mean, there's just such a vast majority of dogs that of different breeds and of different mixes that need help. Right. And that, you know, right. I just, and how many cats do you have uh, on average at one time? Probably 50 to yeah. 75. Wow. Yeah. Yes. I mean, and, you know, um, if somebody comes to us or calls us mm-hmm. and they're looking for an animal and we don't have it, uh, for to me personally, it doesn't matter if you go to Animal Friends, Humane Animal Rescue, mm-hmm. Paws, any of these groups. It doesn't matter. Just right. rescue. Right. So I feel the I'm same way. Refer you. Yes, I'm going to refer you. And that doesn't upset me one Mm-mm. bit because no. you are rescuing. And that is the important thing because is rescue. There are some people out there and I've interacted with a lot of them where they, you know, I feel like if for them to rescue, it needs to be from a foster home for a dog. They need to see a dog in a living in a home environment. They need a potty trained dog. Right. They need, you know, and if that means going through a rescue that's foster based. By Absolutely. all means, I would much rather you adopt from that than to go buy Absolutely. from, you know, a puppy mail. Um, because not everyone yeah. can see through the behavior of the shelter dog and to see yeah. that they're heightened energy, they're overstimulated, right. and that they right. need some energy to burn before you see really who that dog is. That's correct. They're so different once you get them out of that environment. Atmosphere. Yeah. Shelter, I of course, grew up with animals, but I wanted a Rottweiler since I was very young. And um, I met my first Rottweiler at a dog show and it was love at first sight. Mm -hmm. And I was going to have a Rottweiler when I could. And my first Rottweiler came from our shelter and she was in our shelter for over a year. Mm -hmm. And she was so unshowable to potential adopters she had no chance. She was one of the best dogs I ever had. Aww. She was aggressive in the shelter, never aggressive once I owned her. There mm-hmm. was no aggression ever whatsoever. And lots of animals don't do well in the shelter. It's very stressful. Mm-hmm. Our shelter is very, very stressful. It's mm-hmm. not set up with the animals well. And that's another thing this new building is going to do. It's going to make it much more mentally cohesive for the animals to be in the shelter and it'll solve so many of those problems really love it can you can you talk about decompression in a home with a shelter dog what does that look like how many like how long do you think dogs need to sit in a new home before their true colors really show oh my i see dogs that it takes three to six months yeah to really come out of that shell some of them don't even bark for three to six months correct that's right. And even myself bringing animals home, I get animals that walk into my home. My last little dachshund that I rescued, she walked in here and you would have thought she always lived in my home. Aww. My Rottweiler mix I have, town mix, she lived 18 months in a strip, abandoned strip mine in Kentucky. And she, it helps because they know me. Yeah. You know, they come into my home and they've known me because they've been at the shelter. But she, even to this day, has triggers. You can pick up a paper. You can make a funny noise. And she runs for her crate because her crate is her safety zone. Mm -hmm. And um, she goes to her crate for a few minutes and sits and then comes back. She's been with me four years. She knows what, but so some, you know, there's lasting effects for these animals, just like there are for humans. You know, they have... You know, they can have things happen to them in their life they don't always get over. So I tell people that, and I tell people animals that are special needs, if you take this animal home, because most people say they just need a little bit of love, mm, Mm -mm. that's not all, you know, that's not it. And they look at you when you say, try to talk to them about it, like you don't know what you're talking about. But I tell them, if you can take this dog home and you can understand that, Maggie's scared of strangers and Maggie, even with some love, may always be afraid of a stranger coming into your house and that's okay, then you should adopt Maggie. But if you want Maggie to be the neighborhood dog that loves everybody 
and that may never happen for her, then you shouldn't adopt this dog. I I have seen that so many times. It's like you need to meet the dog where it is, accept them for who they are, and give them what yes. you can for what they need rather than create a narrative or or persona of what you want from the dog and expect them to meet that. And then when it, if you have high expectations for a dog that's they're never going to meet, it's not going to work out. It isn't going to If you work cannot out. meet a dog where it is, if you cannot see their needs and see what they need, it's not going it's really not going to work out. Yes, correct. And it's yes. and then in, in that case it's not the dog's fault. It's just it's it's it a mismatch. Yeah, correct. it's just yes, not it seeing isn't. what they need. Right. And people too, I, this is another big thing in rescue. The dogs come to us, they're scared. They come to us, they're taken care of, they're given what their needs are met. The volunteers, the staff love them. And it isn't too long that the shelter or foster is their home and their family. And then people come in to adopt them and they'll call me and say, I don't understand why Maggie's not happy to see me when I come home from work. I saved her. You didn't save her. She was already saved by the rescues and she is used to this being her home and this is her home and we're her family. And I try to get people to look at that and say, you're taking just like if you went to the next town over and you got an animal from a family, that is the same thing. The rescue is their family and you're taking them away. So they've got to give them time to realize that you're their family mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. and this is where they belong, you know, and they miss, mm -hmm. they do. And I, it's, you know, we do have people call and say, well, I didn't realize how they'll bring the dog back and it'll get all excited. And, and um, we have a man that has a dog that stops in his way to camp and he stops once or twice a year. And, you know, the first time he came, he said, I can't imagine when, when I started down the driveway and got mm -hmm. out and, she came in and after a few minutes of smelling the staff that greeted her, how excited she got. Aww, well, yeah, they sweet. remembered that, you know, they remembered us. So we are their family for a while, even though it's temporary, we are their family, truly. And that's another reason too, why besides we want them to have them to be treated well and get good homes, but that's another reason why people have to understand that most rescues ask the questions we do. Sure. Because yeah. we do care about yeah. them. Yeah. And, yeah. And that's, and I was going to say that too, like it's hard. Some people don't have the pay. And I think that's what continues the problem is that there's a lack of patience and there's an immediate, like you decide you want a dog, you assume that you can get a dog the next day and you can really Correct. only get your dog the next day if you really go through a puppy mill or, Correct. or, you know, a really, bad breeding situation. Dogs are not readily available. They are creatures. I mean, you have to go through a process. You have to prove that like you can provide for them, that you have a stable right. environment, you right. know, and, and for people who want to buy dogs, I'm like, if you really want to buy a breed, be prepared to wait six to 12 months. If you have waited at least six months for a dog, then you've gotten it from somewhat of a reputable breeder. If you decide right. you want a dog on Monday and you get a dog, a puppy on Friday, more likely than not, that's <laughs> that's from a well, yes, that's a puppy mill. And, you know, and we see people also that come and meet a dog and they are immediately decide, yes, we want this dog, and then they go home and think about it and they call you the next day yeah. while they're waiting for their application to be processed and say, Well, no, we decided that this wasn't the right pet or we're not ready. Well, what happened if you took that dog home? Right. You know? Right. So sometimes going home and thinking about it right you know doesn't now we do same day adoptions i have people coming saturday but they've been approved already interviewed them we've already did their their processing of their application and they've had time to think about it and like i told the lady today that i spoke to you know please read up on this type of a dog you know please you know and i talked to her a while about it because that's what we want you want we want you to come and be sure and if you come i tell people if you come and you're not sure it's fine to go home and think mm -hmm. about it mm -hmm. you know take that extra day or two and think about it and be sure really be sure and what is your adoption fee for dogs and for cats so um the majority and the normal fee is two 165 for dogs and 95 for cats there are some variations in that 
we have some programs, we have some sponsorship programs. So we have a golden buddy program, which matches senior dogs with seniors. Mm -hmm. So there are different programs that would vary on that, but that's the normal. Most of the time, that's the fee for the majority of them. And that's shots, warming, spaying and neutering. If they're old enough, they're heartworm and limes tested. Mm -hmm. They're on heartworm prevention. They're on flea and tick prevention. Um, They're microchipped. And anything they need to make them adoptable, we do for them. And, And what is your adoption process? Filling out an application, waiting for that to be processed. We try to process them in a couple days, although we have it take at least a week. We have, we've had it take 10 days. Sometimes you can't reach their references. Sometimes you can't get a hold of their vet reference. So, you know, there can be variables that, you know, take days to get in touch with people. Mm -hmm. So it just depends on what we need from the person. Do you require like a fenced yard? Do you require? We don't require a fenced yard with every animal. Do we have animals that we do require fence shards? Yes. Okay. Yes. And then do you uh, have mileage limitations? No, none. Good to no. know. I feel a lot of people. We, we, we've adopted all over the United States. Okay. Yes. So what else, Beth Ann? How can our listeners help? What other message can we convey? You know, and there's lots of ways they can help. We have wish lists we share. Mm -hmm. Um, We have a Chewy wish list. We have an Amazon wish list they can go to. There's everything from newspapers that we use a lot of daily, you know, up to that uh, monetary donation that they can donate. Sometimes it can be the littlest thing, you know, people... Drop off paper you, towels or yeah, towels, yeah, yeah, used yeah. used towels, used comforters. Water, bottled water for our employees. Yeah. Uh, you know, toilet paper. Mm-hmm. They're, they just clean up. Uh, you know, yeah. there's all types of things people can donate that don't always, um, they think of. And really, and, and time, you know, people say, well, how much time do I have to give if I volunteer? There is no amount of time. If you have an extra 15 minutes and you can come in and take one cat and pet that cat a little bit Mm -hmm. or hold that kitten, it's 15 minutes that it didn't get from our staff who is run ragged. Mm -hmm. So if it's just coming in and, you know, giving a little bit of time, we appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Anything you can do, we appreciate. And for our listeners, if you're not, if tanning is not convenient for you to drop stuff off, you can use Chewy or the Amazon wish list, or you can drop off at any healthy pet products location. And then we about once a month will run donations up that run the gamut from food to towels to beds to crates to to clothing. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, let's talk about the different funds that people can donate to. You have three funds, the hope fund, the building fund, and just your general fund. Let's talk about those. Yeah. So yes, our building fund, of course, is, um, anything that goes towards our new building, they can go, um, and make that through a PayPal and that website is orphans of the storm, PA.org slash new building funds. Our Hope Fund Medical Fund, our medical fund is um, the main fund, but the Hope Fund is part of that. The Hope Fund is a restricted fund that is used just for uh, medical needs that are above and beyond the normal shots, worming, spaying, and neutering. Dentals, we had uh, a dog yesterday, had his hip done, that covered that. Heartworm treatment, we always have dogs that are going through heartworm treatment. That, you know, is used for that. We have our golden buddy that they can donate to. Um, That money goes in there and that helps cover the adoption of a senior pet. Our general fund, they can donate to our general fund. That fund is to take care of the shelter and its needs. Okay. So, Bethann, any other thoughts? Did we miss anything? Anything at all. You know, we can always use volunteers. Mm -hmm. 
And I tell people that they do not have to come to the shelter and volunteer. They can ha- help with off-site events, hmm. maybe take an animal for ice cream, you know, maybe take that animal to a vet appointment, help transport animals, um, incoming animals, make callbacks to adopters and see how the adopted animals are doing. Oh, they I can, love that. Yeah, yeah, they can do that from home. You know, they could get yeah. the list from us and um, see how the animals are doing. If anybody needs any help, that's great. If they want to come to the shelter and not walk animals or unable to, they can help us make callbacks to messages. They can help us set up pay and neuter appointments. There is different areas that people, whether it's our shelter or, or any rescue, they, you know, some people say, well, we don't want to go to the rescue. Most everybody has has things that they need help with by volunteers that you can do that you don't necessarily have to come into the shelter. We have people that have allergies, a couple of them that volunteer. Maybe they make, you know, they collect things for us or they help in an off-site event where maybe there's not animals. Right. So even if, you know, people with allergies can come and volunteer and offer. I love And that. again, it, you know, it can be any kind of shelter that's a, brick and mortar building or foster base. We all need that help. Yes. Okay. My last question is we heard you love Rottweilers. What's your, your next favorite breed or type of dog? Your favorite. Dachshunds. Dachshunds. I had a feeling. Hmm. Did you like, (laughs) we loved um, meeting Theo and uh, what's Louise? Yes. Yes. Uh, Mother and son. Was it mother and son? Yes. Yeah. And I have a dachshund. I've had, eight at one time but yes they're they're a favorite and they've been uh uh, since i was very young like dachshunds my family had a boarding kennel and we had a little tiny dachshund we boarded in our house for people we knew and i just fell in love with the breed and love them really love them yes and bethann what's the hardest part of your job don't cry (laughs) I would say knowing that you can't help them all. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Knowing that there's animals that you yeah. you have to turn people away that you can't help. That's yeah. probably the hardest part of the job. Yeah. Do you have, are you an only child? No. How did you, how did you fall into this? Why were you the one out of all the kids, I guess, is the best question. Uh, my, right? sister, my sister was involved since the beginning. Oh, okay. Yeah, she was until my mother was ill and then she retired Um, and she's still involved. She's on the board of directors and still does things. So I think that um, (laughs) (laughs) that it became a lifelong so long. I just think it was part. It was just part of my soul. Yeah. I saw um, how passionate my mother was, and she's the reason that I get up every day and continue doing it in her memory and knowing that she give her life for this. And so, yes, she's my driving force. What an inspiration you are and what an inspiration Orphans of the Storm is. So, Thank you. Thank you. I'm not the inspiration. My mother's the inspiration. So she, she, she's the reason it's there. And, um, she said mean, lots of help through the years and we couldn't do it with all the help for sure. And a lot of dedicated people. So it takes a village. Yeah, it uh, certainly does. I mean, yeah, it, it takes a village. If we're, if we're doing, let's see what we said, 54 years times 700. So your mom saved about 35,000, 35,000 dogs. Thanks and to your cats, mom. And, and cats. cats. Thanks to your mom. 35,000 you animals. Thanks to her. You better believe it. Yeah. Yes. Wow. My very last conversation I had with my mother before she passed away was about Orphans of the Storm and the animals. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. And her rescue that she had. She had a standard poodle that she rescued from animal friends and that was her um, buddy. And um, she, that was our conversation. Mm-hmm. So absolutely. Wow. As a closing note, yeah. I think what we can really take away from talking with Beth Ann is that, you know, whether you are listening from Pittsburgh, whether you're listening from California, you know, from Michigan, 
you know, reach out to your rescue, your local rescue groups, reach out to the to the shelters, to the foster based rescues and ask how you can help, you know, whether that's monetary or phone call or physically walking, they can they can use it, you know, there's homeless dogs everywhere. Yes. And and let's just keep that in mind. Mm hmm. Facebook, Instagram, website is basically all orphans of the storm. I know that I think if you search it, there is more than one, but you want to look for the one in Catanning, PA. Right. I think Instagram has a dot between each word. Correct. Yeah. Yes, so. and our Facebook is Orphans of the Storm, No Kill Animal Shelter. There is, and the shelter, Orphans of the Storm in Illinois and us, we get applications and calls people looking for animals and they are to want us. So we're always saying, no, you've got the wrong shelter. Here's their number. And they do the same <laughs> for us. We even get, we even get donations that are supposed to be to Aww. one or the other and we forward them to each other. So yes, that's yes. Okay. And ours has the dog and the cat and the umbrella. Mm -hmm. Yes. Where theirs has a St. Bernard looking dog on it. So yeah, there is a difference, but yes. Yeah. And um, please reach out to Orphans of the Storm if you're looking for your next furry companion. You know, there's a lot of options out there. Dog friendly, cat friendly, small, medium, large, young, old, whatever you're looking for. Mm -hmm. I mean, Bethann can help you find the right dog for you or yep. cat for you. Yep. We will try. That's for sure. And and fostering, too. And fostering and right. donating and, and, and everything. Everything. It's just At, everything and anything. Yeah. Thanks, Bethann. We really Thank appreciate you, your Bethann. time. Thank yes. you, ladies, for having me on. Thank you. You're very welcome. And All right. We'll talk soon. Today. See you soon. Yes. Thank you. Bye. 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 If you're hearing this message, you've listened to our entire episode. And for that, we thank you. If you have any questions or would like to follow our other projects, join our Tony Unleashed and Healthy Pet Products social media pages like Facebook and Instagram. Please leave us a review and share episodes with your friends so we can further expand our message to listeners just like you. Don't hesitate to tell us which topics you would like us to cover in future episodes. To get in touch, you can reach us by emailing info at TonyUnleashed.com or by sending us a message on social media. So reminder that we drop episodes weekly every Tuesday and thanks for your support.